Howdy, pilgrims. This is Kachi, also known as Dulacaba, and I'm here today with Interstellar Rift. You know, I love space games, and I especially love space games where you get to build your own ships. Games like Avorian and Empyrean and Interstellar Ship, Interstellar Rift, all have ship building. And while the shipbuilding in the other games is either really well handled by tutorials or fairly intuitive, here in Interstellar Rift, this shipbuilding uh, situation can be a little bit confusing. And since I've got some friends who are just getting started with Interstellar Rift, um, I promised them that I'd do a uh, tutorial as brief as is possible to demonstrate how the shipbuilding interface in Interstellar Rift works. So without further ado, let's head on into the shipbuilder. When you first open the game, you'll have this panel on the left side, and it's the second icon down that is the Interstellar Rift ship editor. All right, so when we enter the editor, we're gonna have this in front of us, and it's a lot of stuff to look at and try to figure out how it all works. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go over the pretty much the whole interface here for you guys the first thing we have is up here at the top left we have a refresh resource cost button as we build our ship we will have an ongoing tally of the different resources necessary to build the ship that we're designing and we can hit this refresh resource costs to make sure that it's completely up to date with whatever the resource costs are of the ship we're building next we have this iron weight here and this represents the ship's mass in kilotons next to that we have this shield that represents the max armor the physical durability of the exterior of the ship then we have the max shield power all right the amount of power generated by our shield generators then over here we have our max speed how fast it can move forward or backwards and then we have our max turn rate, which is the maneuverability factor of the ship. And then over here, zero forward slash T shows us how much power we must generate per tick in the game in order for our ship to be properly warp capable. All right. Then below that, you'll see it says teleporter required. Ship needs a teleporter or it will be inaccessible. Life support required. Ship need ship needs a life support system or there will be no air to breathe this right here is the checklist you can collapse that checklist and and then you know make it reappear again but basically what this does is this keeps us apprised of anything that we need to add to the ship in order for it to have its most basic requirements teleporter and the various aspects of life support okay over on the left here you'll see we have a panel that says room zero every ship that we build is going to be composed of rooms now the whole ship can be one big room or it can be broken up into multiple rooms but those rooms will be shown in this list on the left here and you can select one of them come up here and click inside the box and change the name of it and since the first room of my ship is going to be the bridge of my ship i'm just going to rename this to bridge hit enter and now our first room that we create is going to be called the bridge down here on the left we have this group of icons circling around and these are accessible via the f keys f1 f2 f3 f4 and f5 and these are the different editor modes within the game so we're going to come back to those in just a moment because first we're just going to handle these simple little icons down here the first is this is a, a switch lighting mode button when we build a ship, the ship is going to be lit up with universal light, so it's very well lit and you can see what you're working on. However, it can get in the way of understanding exactly what the effect is of the light fixtures that you install in your ship. And as a result, you can click this button and it will turn off the artificial universal lighting. And instead, you'll have only the light that's being generated by the light fixtures in your ship. And this is a great way to make sure that your ship is sufficiently lit up. Then next over here, we have a reset camera position button. This reorients the camera on this lozenge right here in the center of the screen which indicates which is the front direction of the ship at the, the direction that the arrow points all right then we have paint mode paint mode can be activated by clicking this 
paint bucket here or by clicking down here on this paint mode icon in the corner which shows the combination of colors that are being used and that's so we can paint the exterior or interior of our ship and then lastly down here we have a level up arrow and a level down arrow these can be shortcutted with the page up and page down keys and what this basically does is this takes us up and down through levels of the ship's structure okay and you'll see what i mean as we begin to work so now let's talk about these individual modes here that are accessible by the f keys the first one is interior edit mode and it's your most basic mode of ship building it's called interior edit mode because it will display only one room whichever room you have active in your list of rooms up here in this list all right then the second mode is the prop edit mode it will show the entire interior of your ship at whatever level you happen to be on here with page up and page down so that you can see the whole interior for for adding in props and, and systems the next mode is the exterior editor mode and this allows us to see our ship from outside as it appears in the game and in that mode we can add engines on it and sensor arrays and solar panels and all kinds of cool stuff like that and then this mode is the power group editor and what this does is this will, has an interface that will allow us to take different pieces of equipment that we've installed into our ship and group them together into powered systems and that helps us have more control over our ship via engineering then lastly down here we have device editor mode and what it allows us to do is set up the initial state of things like our, our defensive shield generator how high is that that shield generator going to be turned up when the ship is first created or to set the access levels to different things within the ship now as we build the ship we'll be going through these individual modes and that's why i'm not sitting here clicking buttons and showing you a bunch of stuff all right now when it comes to actually moving around in the editor itself you can use w s a and d to move around hold down your middle mouse button and you'll be able to rotate your view scroll with your middle mouse button and you can zoom in and zoom out hold down your right mouse button to remove blocks and left mouse button to add blocks so if i click with my left mouse button here you'll notice that it adds a block i can use my middle mouse button to look at the interior of that box all right i can move forward back left right with wasd etc now my right mouse button will allow me to erase that block see so left mouse to add right mouse to subtract so hopefully that that's pretty clear wasd to move around mouse wheel scrolling to zoom in zoom out hold down middle mouse in order to uh tilt and pan as we work okay so let's get started building a ship now as i said this lozenge here in the center points the direction of the front of the ship which is of course very important and so what this is going to do is give us our orientation the very first room that we create remember is going to be called bridge because we had changed the name up here and if i just drop a single box here you'll see that we've got a new indicator up here on our checklist room ventilation bridge has no ventilation there will be no breathable air in this room okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add a few boxes here for this first level i think we'll add two on either side and just expand this to three wide there we go now something i want to show you is if i click the page up and we go up a level you can see the generic ceiling that's on this one block high room if i come back down you can see inside the room and if i come down one more we can't see anything because we're below the level of the room that we're working on so this entire room structure here is all the room that's known as bridge now down here what we have is floors walls ceilings cockpits exterior windows doors furniture which is 
things like light fixtures and bunk beds and cabinets and things like that. And then systems, which is life support, which is what this whole stack is. Um, a wall terminal, which allows us to see the status of our ship, as well as some information about the solar system we're in. A power cell, which is basically a capacitor. We've got a defensive turret. We've got a fuse box. We've got a couple of ion engines, a disposal, a salvager, a rocket launcher, and some other stuff down here that we'll eventually get to. Now, all of this, remember, is underneath interior edit mode and to start laying out this room what I did is I clicked on floors okay so that's what was active there and if I want to have my floors be something other than just this plain gray stuff I can certainly do that I can pick a, a floor decoration and as you can see I can make my floor however I want it here in terms of the overall appearance just pick some different ones this is our plain one that we started out with and so by default when you lay out the floor of your room it's gonna have the standard floor okay and here you can see we got all kinds of interesting ones and whatever and I tend not to get too fancy with my floors I don't need particularly fancy floors here maybe we'll put a fancy one there and a fancy one there all right so as you can see very simple to start laying out your room now, what happens if I want this room to be two blocks tall? Well, if I come up a level, I can now lay another layer in on top of my first layer of the room. And now, as you can see, we can see down into that room and it's two layers deep. Because whatever level I'm, uh, you know, oriented to here with the arrows is the level at which we're going to be installing stuff we got to make sure that we're down to whatever level we want to be at that we want to put stuff in so if i am here and i want to put something on the floor down here on the first level like say these running lights i've got to be down to this first level if i'm up one and i start trying to lay it in you'll see nothing happens here because i'm up above the basic floor level I can do decorative walls so that I can decide that what I want is like um, the standard gray wall, which is what we have here. Or I can do something a little fancier. I can do some sort of deco wall. And you'll see that as I put my mouse over here, it orients to whatever the angle is. All right. And there's a number of different walls available as well as a wall advertisement and uh, for for some of the companies and things like that, a server wall and, and an industrial type wall. So we've got lots of options available for the interior appearance of the ship. We can come on in here and, you know, drop this in the interior to make our wall have the appearance of the industrial hallway wall. And if I want to be rid of these things, remember that I left click to place it and I right click to remove it okay just gonna click on the standard wall and put the standard wall back in there I'm also gonna come back to floors and I'm just gonna put in a standard floor here okay I'm gonna add in one more block there and one more block there so I've got a little bit of room so we've looked at floors and we looked at walls. Now we have ceiling tiles as well. Now the ceiling tiles, there's a standard ceiling, a deco ceiling, um, deco ceiling type two, industrial ceiling, server ceiling. When you put these in, you're not gonna see them, okay? You'll notice that they do not show up. And even if I rotate and look at it from below, I can't see them. So any ceiling panels you put in, any lights that you put in are not going to show. And so you've got to kind of bear in mind what it is that, um, you know, you're, you're doing because you won't see them until you're actually in the game. All right. So floors, walls, ceilings, cockpits. There are four cockpits. There is a, a very large kind of industrial comp cockpit. That looks um, kind of like a skylight, okay? We've got a, a two block wide cockpit. 
that looks kind of shuttly. Then we've got a single block cockpit that looks kind of shuttly. Let me here. And I can put this in any direction that I want on the exterior of the ship, as long as it's on the exterior of the ship. If I try to put it on the interior of the ship, you'll see nothing happens. Okay. So I happen to like this one, which is much more of a fighter cockpit. And so we're going to use that guy right there. And if we look from the back side now, you can see some steps going up. And uh, we've got some uh, pilot seats in there and stuff. All right. You'll notice that we still have these messages up top. Teleporter required, life support required, or room ventilation required. Well, here we have windows. And we have a number of different windows available. And I think what we'll do is we'll grab this square window. And we'll put one in right there. Oops, I guess we'll have to do it right there. Yep, there we go. So let's just drop in a couple of windows to show how those work. And um, then we also have doors. Now, here's the thing is if I take a door and I put it in the very back. Or here or, you know, anywhere, basically. You'll notice that suddenly we've got a new room that has appeared in our list and that if I click on that room's name, you'll see on the other side of the door, we've now got a single cube that is a new unique room. And um, that room also has no ventilation currently. So you'll see if I go to bridge, it activates this and we can see it and that room becomes invisible. But if we mouse over, it's orange. If we go to room one, we mouse over the bridge, it turns orange, and we can hit spacebar to activate whatever we've turned orange, just for the shortcuts. So there you got your basic notion of, of how this all works. Well, now we do have some deco stuff. We've got, we're still on interior edit mode, and we've got some light panels and stuff. And then we've also got some systems, okay? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to lay out the general layout of our ship. We're going to go come to our new room, room one, and we're just going to add some space in here. We're going to come up one level so that we can make it two levels tall, just like we did our first one. There we go. And now you can see we've got two distinct rooms to our ship. All right. And our second room is where we're going to have our engines. So we'll just rename that engines there we go enter and now we have our two distinct rooms okay so here in bridge now we have to start to consider some of the things that we require and one of the things we're going to require is light so we're going to come here to furniture i'm going to select the wall panel i'm going to make sure i'm down at the bottom level and I'm going to add a light panel there and a light panel here. And I think we'll do a light panel on either side of the door. Now, here you can see some effect of the light, but if I come down here and click the light switch mode, notice that now you can see how much illumination there is. If we go to the engine section, look how dark it is. It is absolutely pitch black. All right, turn this back on and we can see inside there. So that's what we were talking about with the light mode. All right, so now, we're going to put in some lights back here in the the engine room. I think I'll just go every other one here. And then we'll do one in the rear center. And now, if, again, if I change light modes, you can see we've got a basic amount of light in there. And so to ensure we've got plenty of light, we're going to come up a level so that we're definitely dealing with our highest level. And we've got a couple of different ceiling lights. We've got a, a small ceiling light, a standard ceiling light, and then we've got a large ceiling light. And you see the large one actually takes up two panels, and the regular one only takes up a panel. And I'm going to run a row of the single panel lights right down the center of that bay. And then I'm going to activate the bridge section. And I'm going to do the same thing. Just run it right down the middle. And I think I'll actually do one in these corners here as well. There we go. And now if I 
to change the light mode, you see we got a fair amount of light in that section. We come back to engines, we got a fair amount of light in that section, at least enough to be able to see and function, and that's the important part. So we went through floors using that to lay out our overall shape of our ship. We went to walls and saw that we could do some deco stuff if we wanted to. Ceilings so that we could have custom ceilings if we wanted. We added in our cockpit to the bridge section. Come down a level here and turn this light back on. All right. Then we added in a couple of windows here just, just to show how, how that works. And then we used a door which created our second room when we added that door in. Then we came here to furniture and we added in some light fixtures. Along with those light fixtures, we've got bunk beds and we've got decorative bookshelves. We've got a little kitchen thing. Um, we've got a sign um, and we've got directional signs. We've got a, a basic locker and we've got a weapons locker. And these are all things that we can add in. Well, let's say we've got all this basic stuff added in and we're happy with that. Well, now what we've got to do is come to systems. And this is where we start to deal with the life support requirement. This very first thing here you can see is life support system. When I mouse over it in the top right corner, it shows us that it costs 250 iron and 25 copper. It provides oxygen. The players requires at least one unit of oxygen to function. This has to be placed on the left cargo pad, meaning the oxygen has to be placed on the left cargo pad of the life support system. Not that the life support system has to be placed on the left cargo pad, just to make sure that's clear. This will generate carbon over time, requires a vent in every room to function, even in the same room as the life support system. It has a weight of 400. It drains 10 energy units per tick. It generates 100 oxygen per tick, and it has a capacity of 1,000 units of oxygen. All right, so the first thing we're going to need is the main unit here, which is what's down here at the bottom of the lift. So we're going to click on that, and we're just going to come and we'll install that actually back here in the engine room. We'll take and stick that right next to the door here. Bing. Just like that. Now, even though we've got that installed, if we don't put in a vent in each room, the oxygen won't managed to get in there and so I'm just going to use a floor vent because we have two ceiling vents two wall vents and a floor vent I'm just going to use a floor vent and I'm actually going to drop two floor vents in in that room and drop a single floor vent in in our front room now you'll notice that those things have disappeared from our checklist up here it still says we require a teleporter but it's no longer got the other stuff in our checklist now here in this area we've got a number of, of different interesting items and uh, in this two items that I tend to add standard to all my ships are the disposal unit and the salvaging unit the reason for that is that in order to launch anything into space from the ship you need a way to get it out there and we use the disposal unit to launch things like defense drones and repair drones well we also need to be able to recover those things and we recover them with the salvaging unit so that's why I use this design because that allows me to put in the disposal unit on one side and to put in the salvaging unit on the other all right I also happen to like to have my fighters to be armed with a rocket launcher so when we come to our rocket launchers here, we have three models. We have one that has the control panel centered on it, one that has the control panel on the left side of the rocket assembly, and one that has a control panel on the right side of the rocket assembly. So we're gonna choose the left side assembly version of it, and we're gonna put that right there. And now you can see if I zoom in that uh, right here, we've got a little control panel for dealing with our rocket launcher. Now, I like symmetry, and this is now not symmetrical any longer, so I'm gonna add two blocks over there, but now I need something to put there. And well, it just so happens one of the things that we have handy here is a turret. So I'm gonna take and add a turret right there, because that means that if I have a co-pilot, he can jump in that, cur that turret, and um, he, can, he can help fight off the alien menace of the Skrill while we're flying along. All right. 
and these other things here we will come back to them eventually but for now the most important thing is we've managed to get our our life support in and i just wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of some of the items that are here some of these items are really big like this strip miner is absolutely vast okay the uh, large drone bay is absolutely vast um and we do have an escape pod docking system here that will eventually will install one but we're going to move on to the next tab so that's a bit about the interior edit mode now the prop edit mode as soon as i activate it you'll notice we can now see the entire interior of our ship on whatever level it is we happen to have it see all right and just before i forget i'm just going to go to the lights i'm going to go to my server lights and i'm just going to drop a light in like this there we go because since that's a single level there make sure we got some light where our rocket launcher and our uh, entryway into our turret is but here in f2 which is prop edit mode we're gonna have staircases of various sorts all right including spiral stairs we're going to have walkways which allow us to put in floors all right so for instance we could select this particular floor and we could put in a layer of floor right here where we're still in the original room the bridge here but we've got a floor there and then we could have ourselves a ladder going up to that floor section see just like so we've also got interior walls most of which are glass and so we could see section off a portion of this with glass and even one of them has a door for like a med bay or whatever all right we have interior windows that we could use so like we could take and put in an interior window um like right here and right here and so now you'll see that basically that's windowed off and we'd be able to walk between those to have this unique section of the ship or we could put those in up here like so and we could actually add um, from our, our wall section we could actually add the med bay door prop which we use the arrow keys to rotate our items And we could put that right there and now we've got our interior windows we got stairs going up to a doorway and that going into the section so you can see there's a lot of interior work that we can do with our ship i'm going to pull these out to make sure we can see clearly as we work but so stairways and these have different orientations and you can experiment with them to see where they orient to and you can always rotate all objects with your four arrow keys all right our walkways our interior walls our interior windows then we have cargo pads we have full cargo pads and you'll notice that on one side of it there's that blue bar that's an informational bar so you want to orient it so you can see it if you install these um, then we have the cargo pad that is the second level of that like so just get rid of those we have individual pads we have half full pad we have some little lockers that we can install as well as little chests all right we also have pillars that we can install that are decorative all right and then that brings us to the lights now the the lights and and other furniture under the uh, prop edit mode we've got kind of a multi-directional light and that multi-directional light we can use our arrow keys to change which of the four corners it actually is set up in I'm actually gonna come get rid of that and then come down a level because there we go I'm up one level too high here um, we have some they're basically one one block tall pillar lights We've got some half block tall individual bulbs. We've got a vending machine. We've got 
tables and a captain's chair and some some plants and other things that are all decorative beds and bathrooms and things like that but then here under system this is this is where we really get into the meat and bones of our building process okay because this is where we're going to find most of the important components that we need for the ship well first of all it says that we have a teleporter required for this ship well this gizmo right here is a teleporter this is a small teleporter and then down here we have a long range teleporter okay and normally for a ship like this you're going to use the standard teleporter now the standard teleporter has again a input screen and you're going to want to make sure that input screen is where you can reach it we're just going to drop our teleporter right there and you'll notice now we no longer have any indications up above i would like to point out that we now have a total in iron copper silicon and steel that's going to be required to build the ship as it is currently we can refresh that remember um we have its overall weight in kilotons and currently its maximum armor is 4.47k but you'll notice it has no shields it has no max speed and it has no max turn because we haven't added any of that stuff in yet all right <clears throat> when you're building your ship there's lots of different components here and i'm not going to go over every single component here there's mining components and building components and all kinds of stuff some that are kind of important is the ammunition loader it's how we get ammunition into our guns i'm going to take and put a, am a couple of ammunition loaders in here so that we would will have them for our turret and for the guns we'll eventually add to our ship for us um, another one that can be pretty important is the engineering terminal the engineering terminal allows us to make adjustments to how we have everything set up in our power system so i'm going to drop in an engineering terminal there um and there's lots and lots of things here we've got assemblers that allow us to build stuff we've got data core terminals that allow us to put in basically computer expansions to our ship systems we've got a 3d printer that allows us to make tools and we've got a cyber warfare suite and we've got a hollow table that shows a map of the solar system that we're in we've got a large and a small rift generator which the rift generators open it uh, basically a hole in, in the fabric of space a rift that allows us to travel from one solar system to another we've got just just a bunch of stuff but only some of this stuff is really truly important to getting your ship flying okay we've got to have a teleporter we've got to have life support we need a cockpit and then most importantly besides those things is we've got to have a power supply as well as engines so for power supplies we have a small hydrogen generator and a hydrogen generator tech 2. now a hydrogen generator is a generator it generates power that runs on hydrogen so it's not a hydrogen generator it creates hydrogen but rather it's a hydrogen generator a generator that runs on hydrogen because all our ships actually run basically on i guess you'd say electricity but hydrogen is the fuel that we use to generate that electricity now you'll notice when i'm moused over the hydrogen generator tech one it takes 250 iron 150 copper it generates power from hydrogen that's what that little symbol is hydrogen power is used for all other devices it weighs 400 it can generate 150 power and it has a capacity the ability to store 150. the larger one is 1500 so it's 10 times as powerful as the other one well we're going to need some power and in order to run that power we're going to need some fuel and these are the fuel tanks so there's a small fuel tank a medium fuel tank a large fuel tank and an extra large fuel tank what we're going to go with here is we're going to end up using a tech 2 hydrogen generator and a large hydrogen tank 
Now the reason I'm going to use those is because I want to show you something and it's going to allow us to get an idea about this exterior edit mode. When I click exterior edit mode, you'll notice we now are looking at the actual outside of the ship as it appears in the game. Okay, and you can see this funny lump here on the top and you may wonder what that funny lump is about. Well, when we get into the interior of our ship, you don't see any reason why there should be a lump like that. Well, if you remember when I was showing you guys the cargo pads, I had done a, a stacked cargo pad. And the thing is, is when you add things that are bigger than the space you're adding it to, the ship will automatically expand to accommodate it. And as a result, what happened is that it added this little extra block up on the top here when I added did that two level uh, cargo storage and I wanted to demonstrate that even further by uh, coming and adding in some items that are bigger than the space we have available so back here in our engine section we have a uh, two block tall interior okay and if we look at the exterior view you'll see it's nice and flat on the top there if I come in and I add the large fuel tank into our ship here and then we look at the exterior view you'll notice that it added this little bulge on the side when I put that in there okay because I didn't have it in the middle instead I pushed it off to one side so we'd be able to walk through the center of it see well in the same way if I take our large hydrogen generator and I drop it in here in a similar fashion you'll see that because I didn't have it go past any walls it didn't create any kind of bulge so you need to be aware of the fact that if your if your item is larger than the space that you're installing it into the game will automatically adjust the exterior of the ship okay so sorry lots of explanation for a very simple thing but I just wanted to make sure that that was clear so we've now got a large tank and we've got a power supply um, coming to our exterior view we're going to look at some of the things we have available here the first thing that we want to look at is we want to look at engines and thrusters and there's basically three different sizes of engines a very small engine a medium engine and a large engine okay and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and slap some large engines on this bad boy now as I do this rather sloppily what you're going to see is we're finally getting some sort of a reaction out of our max speed. And as a matter of fact, our max speed is 265. Anything over 200 is good. Well, what we're also doing is we're incurring a cost to run these engines. We can take our maneuvering thrusters. And again, I'm using my arrow keys to change which direction they face. And I'm putting maneuvering thrusters on now. You do not have to have like maneuvering thrusters pointing up and down and left and right and forward and back. It's not about which direction they face. It's about the simple fact that you have them that gives you your maneuverability. So I'm just going to drop these in here on the side just because we've already gone a pretty long time. But you'll notice that now has given us a, a max turn rate of 1.97 so this is an, an incredibly fast and maneuverable little ship as it stands right now kind of a box but meh we can take and we can add some fixed guns to it again I can use my arrow keys to rotate to these around okay and I'm just gonna take drop in a couple ones there um, I'm gonna roll this around like that flip it like that that'll get it facing the other direction and drop those two in so now we've got four fixed guns for the pilot and then we've got four guns there on our turret we've got ourselves six engines we've got 
a whole bunch of stuff going on here and in our exterior view we can take and add a radar array let's add a small radar array right right here I didn't use my arrow keys to change where it's facing there we go in fact I'll do two of them um, these are the solar panels and we're gonna get to that in a moment and so we've got all this stuff now in terms of adjusting the overall shape of our ship how our ship actually looks that's done with these blocks up here so we have a full cube we have a half a cube we have a, a quarter of a cube and then we have an eighth of a cube so for instance I could come here and click that I could select this guy right here and now you'll see that with my arrow keys I can rotate things around and if I wanted to adjust the overall shape of my ship let's see here there we go I can take and, and I can use these to basically create blends so here the size of, of that indentation that we've got there I could come and I could grab uh, let's see which one um, this one here change its orientation and be able to fill this in you know and and basically sculpt the exterior of my ship to something more to the shape that I want um, and uh, you know rather than having it be boxy we've got lots and lots of different shapes that we can use to create blending as we build the ship now I'm, I'm not gonna bother with all that I'm just trying to demonstrate it and we've also got industrial shapes like girders and things like that that we can use all right and so that's that with the exterior of the ship now now we're going to talk about the power group editor mode okay this this gets a little more complicated but it's not all that hard when we are looking at the interior of our ship we've got a whole bunch of stuff that we've added to our ship okay we've got doors we've got life support we've got our teleporter we've got our our main power supply our fuel tank we've got guns and loaders and all kinds of stuff going on well currently all of this is all running on the same power system and if I click on power group editor you'll see that it says default group and we've got a, a transparent view of all the components on our ship you notice the fuel tank doesn't take any power and therefore it doesn't show up in that view also the ammo loaders that I put in do not show up in this view because they don't take power well currently our generator is going to generate 1500 power per tick it's going to store 1500 power its peak consumption of absolutely everything on the ship is all running at the same time we would be using 2041 power which is of course higher than what our power generation is but there's a constant steady drain of 170 power units going on at all times to keep our our lights running and things like that to charge our capacitor in the uh, power generation and so on well we've got a basic problem here and here's our basic problem if if we took damage and it destroyed our power generator everything is going to go dead because everything is on this system our engines our life support our doors our lights our cockpit our guns everything is going to go dead if our fuel supply is destroyed or our, our generator is destroyed so in order to ensure that we can cover ourselves what we want to do is we want to create a redundancy within our system to ensure that we're taken care of so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename the default group to main 
same thing as before I just click up here in the box type in what I want hit enter down here I'm gonna click plus and I'm gonna add a new group and you notice when I do that how all those items turn yellow what that indicates is that those items are not part of this new group all right if we could actually see clearly any of these components it would mean they would be part of this new group well I'm gonna take this new group and I'm going to name it solar bang so now we've got our main group and we've got our solar group well we're gonna leave solar selected here in the power group editor mode whichever entry within your list of groups here you have selected if you add new components to the ship they will automatically be added to that group so if I've got main selected and I add in like some more engines or thrusters or whatever they're automatically going to be added to the main group on the other hand if I have solar group selected and I add things in they're automatically going to be added to the solar group and since we're going to be putting in solar panels we might as well have them automatically added to the solar group but the whole purpose of the solar group is that we want certain of our systems to be running all the time just by us simply sitting in space and collecting sunlight via our solar processes and well which of those systems are those well the first one is life support so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna click on our life support unit Bing all right well that's actually the light that's behind it I click on our life support unit you'll notice it's no longer yellow it's been added to the solar group and I'm going to do that with all our lights all our doors all our ventilators our teleporter see I've got a couple lights there and a couple lights there and there and there whoops that's the radar array don't want that you can just click it again to take it out of a group and so we've got a light there and a light there so now whoops that was the gun though there we go so now all our lights all our ventilators and we want to make sure that our main power supply isn't part of that our life support our teleporter our doors and all our ventilators are now going to run off of whatever th it is that's powering this solar group everything else is going to be powered via the main group the main group is powered by our generator here well our solar group is going to be powered by solar panels okay so the question is how do we do that well making sure we have the solar group selected we're going to go to our exterior edit mode we're going to come down here to power and we're going to select a solar panel now the solar panels don't have to have the dark panel part of it exposed in order to generate powder power so I can flip this over and the backside looks just like the rest of the hull of the ship and I can use the full panel or the half panel in order to actually do some shaping to the ship if I want in this particular case I'm more interested in just getting us the power that we need um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add solar panels to the exterior of our ship see that's two oops, four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen twenty solar panels now if we come back here to our power group edit mode you'll see that those twenty solar panels are only generating a total of six power you'll also notice 
that there's a constant drain of 11 power between all the various things that we added to this solar system and so we need to generate at least 11 power to be able to operate all these things or they'll be at a low power status and not work so again making sure that solar is selected and going back to our exterior edit mode we're just going to continue to add solar panels and every once in a while I'll just check and see where that puts us all right we're up to nine and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the solar panels to cover up the exterior of our engines. I'm going to flip these guys over using the arrow keys so that it looks more like the classic exterior. Got to back up a little bit with the S key. There we go. And I'm going to use these to cover up our exposed engines. Except that one didn't go right. There we go. That, that. And it's a handy way to be able to add some solar panels to something without it being completely covered in obvious solar panels. But now if we go back to our power system, you'll see we're at 15 power generation via, via the solar panels. And now that means that we've got a surplus of power there and we are now powering all of our lights, our doors, our teleporter, and our life supports, our life support system, all via solar energy. So that if we get take a hit and we lose our engine, our, our I should say our generator, or we lose our fuel supply, we're not going to lose the ability to teleport off our ship, have life support, or get through the doors. All right, well, we've still got our main system here, and it would be good if we could manage, you know, to uh, maybe overcome the fact that our peak consumption is 1041. Well, you'll notice that when I took and I, I removed things from the main system and put it under the solar system, that it reduced our number down from a number that was above our power generation to now being down below our peak power consumption okay and so as a result it means that we now are balanced and there we go so we have a, a ship with all the things that's necessary in order for it to be an operational ship and a few extra things and so kind of the last thing is let's take a look at the device editor mode now, with the device editor mode, what I can do is I can select an item. Let's say, for instance, uh, let's select the cockpit. All right. You'll notice that when I select the cockpit, we get some options over here. The first thing is power off and on. So what that means is that when this ship is created, when the ship is built, I can set it so that it will come into existence with the power systems on or come into existence with the power system off. All right. I can also set permissions, the ability to operate or manage this cockpit, either basic access, ship system access, or flight control, which are things that are going on in the game. Okay, And so that's what this, uh, this device edit mode is about. Now I'm going to go to um, power group edit. I'm going to select our main group. I'm going to come here to prop edit mode. I'm going to go to systems and amongst the things here, I'm going to select a small shield generator. And I'm just going to drop that back here in the corner. Bing. That will be automatically added to our main system. See it's powered by our main system. If I zoom in, you can see that you can see it clearly. And the reason I did that is because now I'm going to come back to device edit mode. I'm going to, if I can reach it, select that small shield generator and you'll see that as well as the ability to have it off and on and have some permissions for it, I can also adjust its starting shield input where it will be set when it very first appears. See? So those are the kind of options that you have here in the device edit mode. And so there you go. Now, last but not least, of course, we want to take just a quick glance at the paint mode. 
Now the basic paint mode for exterior is single solid colors. So we could decide that this is going to be a little red Corvette because the, the red ones go faster. And you'll see we get a little paintbrush icon and it's just a left click to come in and start to paint over things. Right click does not do anything. And we can take and we can paint it red and that's all lovely and everything. And this is painting only the exterior of the ship. So I'm going to do this kind of quick and dirty. There are no decals or anything like that for us to add on to it. There's only painting solid colors. But if you're creative using those exterior blocks um, that we demonstrated that we use to do blends and change shapes with creative use of exterior blocks you can create a series of blocks that you can paint that will allow you to do lettering and symbols and things like that but we're just gonna get this all painted up quick zoom zoom no fancy racing stripes or any of that stuff all right so there we go we've painted the exterior of our ship red but if we go to our interior view you'll notice none of our interior has been painted red well that's because in the paint mode the interior has color sets if we look at this this one uh, one that's very distinct here we go red black white and yellow all right if I paint floors they're gonna be red if I paint walls they're gonna be red if I paint equipment it's going to have red as its main color and yellow and black as its accent colors you see so solid colors red which is why we've got the big square here in that top corner and then accent colors black white and yellow so if we took uh, this one here main color white accent colors two shades of orange and black See? So that's the way the interior painting sets work. Okay? So whatever the largest square is is going to be the main color for the floors, walls, and ceilings. And then the other three colors are going to be your accent colors. So, I mean, we can we can go basic black with just light blue accents and make it look like the inside of the Death Star. We can go with a lovely forest green kind of theme. That makes us feel much more like we're flying an elf ship. We can get crazy and go all My Little Pony on it. All right, and so that's how how the interior painting works. My uh, basic one here that I'm painting with now, the very top left one, is the default colors that are used when you install components in the ship. Okay. So there you go, guys. Once you have managed to build your ship to your satisfaction, painted it up, shaped it up, made it how you want it to be, well, now we need to be able to get it into the game, and we need to be able to ensure that we can get to it and all of that stuff. Well, how we do that is we hit Escape, and we're going to have some options here. The first is to save the blueprint to the menu. We would select that. We would give our ship its name and then we would select it down here, save blueprint, and that would save that blueprint. And you can see the names of lots of the ships that I've designed in the game. The Condor MK1, the Araba and the Arabo Mark 1, the Falcon, the GT MK4 Holler is already one of the default ships in the game, as is the S S the HSC Excavator MK1. Um, uh, here's one of my ships, the Independence, the Jaeger Miner, Jaeger Miner Mark II, the LRC Lark, which is a, a very fast Corvette that I built, the, the Lark Mark II, which is a mining frigate, Mr. Diggles, the Omni, the Robin. These are all ships that I've designed in the game, named and saved, okay? Um, we likewise can export a design to the steam workshop we can create a new blueprint start from scratch we can load a previous blueprint 
This returns us to the ship editor without doing any saves or anything. All right. And this exits the ship editor. Editor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load a blueprint or two and show you guys something a little more complete. Um, first, I think what I'll do is I'll load the LRC Lark. So I click it here. So I clicked this for load blueprint. I click the name of the ship and then click the icon. And there we go. So this this is the Lark. All right, now the Lark is called the Lark because it's a little red Corvette, L-R-C, Lark, all right? So this is the little red Corvette, and you can see that it's somewhat similar in shape to the ship that we were just building. And I don't have any of the exterior uh, tile blocks to change its shape. I've just let it create organically as I've gone. Um, lots of engines, we've got a turret here in the back, and all of that when we check the interior we've got uh, again we've got our disposal and we got our salvaging unit we've got some loaders here in fact four of them for ammo we've got lots of pads for storage because what happens is we blow up a ship and then we salvage it and store up the stuff that we salvaged and then I've got cyber warfare and ship expansions and um, here's our 3D printer, and here's an assembler, there's our oxygen supply, here's our fuel tank, and we've got two Tech 2 power supplies, the large shield generator, and so on and so forth. And so this is the little red Corvette, and you can see when we bring it up a level that the only place that it's two levels tall is here at the back side of it. All right. And that's the little red Corvette. And when we look at the exterior view, we have our solar panels here, which create our redundant system so that if we lose our main power supply, we've still got teleport and life support and all of that. It's a very fast ship doing 293 meters per second. It's also an incredibly agile ship with a max turn rate of 1.86. And uh, this, this is a high speed combat ship. Okay, so that's an example of the type of ship you can build here in the game. Another example of a type of ship that you can build here in the game is the Independence. The Independence may not look like much, but this is a really big, big unit. All right, the Independence is an is a asteroid miner. And if we go to the interior view, you can see here's here's our asteroid mining array. And it's got a lot of stuff going on inside. It's really big. Tons of storage. There's our anchor, to our gravitational anchor. Here are our three standard mining units over here. Here are our, our refinery units. We have a, a huge ion engine to give us mobility. We've got lots of different generators and each generator is set to a specific system we've got a large shield generator and this is our asteroid miner here and we've also got some uh, turrets and things and a rocket launcher so we can defend ourselves and so the independence is is a, a very very big ship all right another example of the kind of thing that we can build is um here's the let's see what's a good one what's a good one um, 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 um the condor the condor mark one all right here is the condor and it's called the condor because when you see the four guns the way that they line up it looks kind of like a beak and the Condor again is a is a straightforward heavy duty combat ship. If we look at in the interior, you can see it's pretty simple and straightforward. It doesn't have a lot of stuff, but it's got a lot of ammo loaders. Um, it's got a salvage unit. It's um, large shield generator. This is primarily a combat ship. All right, and so we can make lots and lots and lots of different stuff uh, the Jaeger miner here's the Jaeger miner and again you can see it's pretty plain 
Um, there's, there's not much really fancy going on with it in terms of the exterior. This one's got two big ion engines and then a bank of smaller engines. In the interior, the Jaeger Miner has two mining units, a refiner here. It's got an assembler and a 3D printer. It's got lots of firepower, lots of firepower. But this is primarily a mining frigate that's designed to be fast at 230, moderately maneuverable. It's, it's certainly not what you'd call an agile ship, but it's a very controllable ship. Um, and uh, as you can see, we've got stacked power supplies and all of that and two big ion engines. And so hopefully sorry that this has been a, a pretty long tutorial and i've had to break it up into multiple episodes but the thing is, is i really wanted to go over this thoroughly um and and then like i say at the end of it i'll show you guys some of the ships some of the kind of things that that you can build now of course i build kind of boxy ships because that's just the way i am it's what i like however ships don't have to be boxy okay this is a very boxy looking situation here when you look at the interior of this ship but when we look at the exterior i mean check out that crazy business okay so i mean with with the various shapes available for external shaping you can do some really awesome awesome ships even though the interior of the ship is basically just that so that's the actual interior of the ship but look at all this external stuff they've added on to make it interesting okay so I mean just because I build boxes doesn't mean you have to build boxes in fact my first ship was called the hush puppy because it was just a shoe box that's a old brand of shoes from back in the day hush puppies but anyway guys thank you so much for joining me Kachi aka Dwakaba for a very thorough uh, tutorial series on using the ship editor here in interstellar rift hopefully with this you will be able to come in here and build the ship of your dreams and like me you will have your own mr diggles which again is a little mining frigate and you will be able to make yourself happy because happy is good so I will catch you guys in the next one. And maybe I'll do a little Interstellar Rift gameplay. You never know. But until then, I must remind you, remember, if you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly. Sasquatch, Sasquatch, knocking on the trees, chucking rocks and screaming like a troop of chimpanzees. Sasquatch, Sasquatch, running around my place. Are you the missing link or are you from outer space?